Welcome, everybody. It's uh, Thursday at around 1 p.m. Eastern time. And man, uh, I have to be out. I'm a little bit out of breath here, but that's OK. I got my second workout from the gym. I went to the gym this morning and I just ran upstairs to get switched to a computer. So I uh, appreciate you patiently waiting. Um, you know, we just had a conversation. I'm going to do a quick shout out to my coach back in high school for track and field, Coach DeBeal. If he's in the room, what's up, Coach DeBeal? Anybody knows Coach DeBeal at Somerville High School? I don't know if he's still there, but he used to say, to be uh, early is to be on time. To be on time is to be late. And to be late is to be forgotten. So I sure hope that you haven't forgotten about us over here a few minutes past, but um, we're inside the group already. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. Today, we're talking about something that's really exciting for me to talk about because it's really just a reflection of how I got started and how you can get started or how you already are starting as a real estate investor working part-time to generate your first hundred grand as a real estate investor. Is anybody interested in doing that? Inside the Zoom room, we have Wendy, Gabriel, Mo, Noman, Joe, Jasmine. We have other folks here. Let's see. Do a quick come off of uh, come on video real quick, everybody, so people could see you inside the inside the room. If you want to come on video, just say what's up to everybody. Give a quick hand wave. We're inside of Facebook. Um, otherwise, we'll just keep going here. So you guys are being kind of quiet, so that's okay. What's up, everybody? Okay, cool. All right, so inside of Facebook, I'm gonna go ahead and pop open Facebook over here on my other screen. Let's see who we have in the room. Joe, if you can kind of monitor as well, uh, who do we have in the room with us today? Do you see anybody in Facebook right now commenting that we yeah, have here? No, to no comments out? yet. Uh, so far, three people have popped on. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I mean, um, you know, we're, we're, it's gonna be there. It's got Joe's name next to it, but Joe, just in case you guys don't know, Oh, why don't you come up real quick, man? Let's do a quick intro for Joe. I think we got to give Joe some shout out real quick. So Joe, just put yourself next to me on the screen for a second. Oh, not Joe um, Gazzardi? Irizarry, Irizarry, that's you. That's Joe, that's right. <laughs> the Growth Collective, uh, there you go. Hey, so everybody, I want to just quickly reintroduce you to Joe Irizarry. He's up there in New Jersey. He's been working with me for almost a decade at this point, like seven, eight years. And really just an awesome guy, a man of God, a man of just leadership and business and family and all kinds of stuff. So um, Joe, why don't you tell folks like what you do kind of with us, what you've done, kind of what you're doing now, just to let them know. And how can they get in touch with you if they want to learn more about how we work together and how we do business at the Growth cool. Collective and what else we do? We have uh, so many beautiful things happening at the same time, and that's exciting. Um, keeping track of them maybe is not as easy as anticipated, but it's getting easier. I'm the business development director for Douglas Beck and Associated Companies, which uh, include JDL Ventures. Uh, investors first title. Uh, Douglas is a managing partner for a fund which has made things uh, uh, fantastic for those of you that are already part of the Growth Collective. Uh, so we are doing a lot. We're doing a lot of outreach to our database and letting them know, hey, we're still here. We've only gotten better. Uh, Douglas's experience as a real estate investor is just helping so many people move the chains, as they say, uh, sports analogy. So um, basically what I do is uh, kind of pre-qualify people like are they a good fit for us and ultimately we have to be a good fit for them so that's what i do on a pretty daily basis and then uh just get information out there along with some help a uh, staff member like gabriel and others uh getting information out there as to what's available to them we have these passive investment opportunities that pop up now more often than before and uh douglas basically quarterbacks this entire operation and we are helping again move the chains forward we're here that's for right. You. That's right. So, Joe, what's the best way for someone who's interested in learning more about how you and I and everybody else at the Growth Club that can help them out? How can someone get benefit? Just to remind them, how do they get in touch with you? Is it the website? Well, the best the thing, website? Yeah, the very best thing you can do is, uh, and I'm going to put it in the chat, is uh, uh, um, on the Facebook page, is jointhegrowthcollective.com. You can watch a short video where Douglas uh, presents for a very short video. And then after that, you can set up an appointment with myself or one of my associates. And we'll talk about how exactly we can serve you. Where are you right now in your life? And what do you want to accomplish? Everyone is at a different stage. You might just be getting into real estate investing and say, I want to do this. I have no idea about it. Well, today's story is going to tell you a lot about that because people come in here not knowing anything about real estate and have closed on their first deal in less than 90 days in one particular case, uh, case, less than 30 days. So it's an exciting time. And like Douglas mentioned in our previous session, timing is everything. You can get That's in right. touch with me via my email as well. I'll put it in the chat. Excellent. Thank you so much, Joe. I appreciate you doing that and sharing Pleasure. a little bit about your background and how people can get in touch. So perfect. <clears throat> um, 
Okay, so on Facebook, uh, I just want to be clear, there's a Facebook group that we were, you know, we're inside the Real Estate Investing Mastermind. There's also an event inside of the Facebook group. It's a little confusing. So if you're hearing us, that's great. If you're not hearing us, I just posted inside the event. So if maybe somebody from our team or office can also make sure folks know that we're broadcasting live underneath Joe's name just because of the logistics today. That'd be amazing if someone from our office could do that. But listen, today is a day to get one of these, okay? And some of this, okay? And I do have notes written down, okay? So these are real real life stuff here, okay? Um, and it's gonna be a lot of notes that I'd recommend you take because it's gonna be literally the prescription. I'm not a doctor. I told my growth quantum folks before, but I'm gonna give you guys the prescriptive steps that yours truly, me, and my company did in the beginning, all the way back in 2014. January 28th of 2014 was literally the first day that the decision was made. I made an investment of $28,000. $28,000. Okay, I'm going to share with you today some things you may not know that might make it a little bit more real, more relevant to say, maybe I'm not that much different than you are listening to me today. Guys, I was working in full-time IT for Johnson & Johnson in January of 2014. Man, three years before that, I took the opportunity. One of my friends actually invited me to a meeting, a presentation. Anybody ever been to a presentation for some network marketing or MLM? Be honest with yourself, right? I know you got probably a lot of people have, okay? We've been approached. We've been out to them. Not knocking the industry. A lot of people make a lot of amazing things happen and make a lot of money, help a lot of people, sell some really good products give people the opportunity to start for a couple hundred bucks or even less than that sometimes. But you know what? Three years into that, three years of my life committed to growing a network marketing business in the energy space, I realized that as much as I could have a team of like 70 something people and hundreds of customers, you know what? My income from that business was less than $10,000. Okay. Just being real. I was working in corporate, making over $100,000, which was a blessing, but it took a lot of work to get there. I went to college, a double major with computer information and entrepreneurial studies. And I was around entrepreneurship since I was a kid. My family's had businesses. My sister has a hair salon, my family, my, her, her husband, and my parents you know, built, built that business from, from nothing to what it is today. 30 years in, a successful hair salon in central New Jersey. My brother had a landscaping business, right? I've been around that. My dad was uh, you know, basically doing stuff on the side as far as IT and helped me also learn from a young age about entrepreneurship by putting me in the position, working with other small business owners, helping them with what? With technology, because he gave me a computer. Some of, some of you might've heard the story, a computer that was getting it thrown out anyways, a 386. Does anybody know what a 386 computer is? I know Rich might know what that is. So a 386 is like the 1990s, right? This is like way back. Um, it was a big white box, okay? But he brought it home. I was nine years old. It's a blessing. My dad, Mr. Beck, John Beck, he's in this group. He might hear this. I hope he does. Appreciate you, dad. Appreciate everything you've done. Appreciate all the things you continue to do. You're a blessing. We love you. And uh, miss you a lot, man. I want to see you soon. So hopefully you come down and visit. We come visit you. But um, anyways, uh, we talk, you know, not enough, but we talk enough, uh, you know, when we can, I guess you could say. Um, but we don't see each other that much. We used to see each other almost every week. So Basically, uh, he brought home this computer. I'm nine years old and I'm, I'm taking this thing apart and I'm figuring stuff out and trying to figure out, you know, how to program. It was MS-DOS and Windows 3.1. It was still CD-ROMs and floppy disks, okay? But this is the, the picture. So, you know, think back to when you were a kid or think back when you were a younger, a young man or woman and some of the things you did that kind of inspired you to even be listening to me right now. What do I mean? I would bet that mostly everybody that's going to listen to today's presentation at some point in your younger years made a decision in your head that you decided, I want to own my own business one day. I want to have my own, I want to create my own destiny. I want God to help me, but I know I can do something that's bigger than what someone else can tell me I can do myself. Like I want to, I want to be able to do this on my own. And so I was that kid that grew up around the entrepreneurial activities and my parents embraced that and encouraged that and then of course you know it was a blessing to work in a large company one of the you know fortune 100 fortune 50 maybe companies in the world like um great business great model multi-billion dollar company johnson johnson and still have good friends from that business from working in there and, and things like that but it was it plateaued right it plateaued in the sense that <clears throat> promotion promotion okay now it's getting more difficult to get promotions difficult to earn more 
what's going to happen next? Well, I started looking to other businesses. I started looking at other ways of making additional income. Why was I looking to make additional? Because I want to have a ridiculous amount of money? No, because making $100,000 and my wife working as well, and now we have a family, right? Does anybody have a family? I think you all, somebody has a family here that you have children, you have a significant other, you have something, somebody that needs you. Is it worth it to trade your life every single day, every single week or five days a week at least, but really not? Because you think about, you're thinking about what's going on at work on Sunday before you go to work the next day. You're thinking about what happened on Friday when you get home on Saturday and you hang out with your friends, your family, you say, man, this is a tough week. You're thinking about it constantly. Am I right or am I wrong? I know, I know that generally speaking, you're going to say, yeah, that's, that's true. I do think about the work a lot, actually. And uh, that was my life, right? I was pretty much like working all the time, even in the business of someone else's business. So um, I decided that wasn't the life I wanted to live. I decided that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I decided that in college, but even before that, like I said, when I had those experiences, but then when it became real was when I actually experienced what it was like to work for somebody else in a large company and get a lot of awesome, you know, connections and knowledge and experience working there, but not really seeing what I believe to be my fullest potential come through because of limitations that were being put in place that were not really any one particular individual's fault. It's just the corporate ma matrix, as I call it, the corporate America matrix. Okay. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? The corporate America matrix? Like it is like another world. Okay. And so I think Tony Robbins said once I was at an event, he's like, you go drive in a box, you take your box, you put it in your other box, meaning your lunch box into your car, you drive in that box to a big box, which is a building, you go sit in another box, which is a cubicle, and you live the box lifestyle every single day from one box to another box, right? I know somebody here, if you're with me, let me know if that's something that you're like, I'm tired of these boxes holding me because the box is the boundary of what you believe to be your fullest potential, but it's really not though. Right, so I'm going to tell you something. Today, I'm going to give you tactical things to do. This is not going to be hyperbole or a strategy that's so high level you can't even really implement. I'm just giving you the backdrop to understand this is like part of what I realized and what made me get so focused on deciding to become a real estate investor because the box lifestyle that I was living was not enough for me to feel fulfilled. You see, because there's the science of success, as Tony Robbins calls this, and then there's the art of fulfillment. So like scientifically, I can give you a method to create a hundred thousand dollars, like a thousand different ways. There's many ways these days you can make a hundred grand. It's not about the making the hundred grand part. It's what really fulfills you and me as an individual. Right. And so <clears throat> at working in corporate and then going into this business, this network marketing business for a few years and experimenting and learning different things about sales and marketing and, and presentations and being promoted as a leader because I grew a team and I grew a business, but still very, very little to show for it. It's not anybody's fault. Like I'm not knocking that business. It's just the way it worked. But you know what? It wasn't about the income for me that made a difference. I want you all to write this down. It's not always just about the income. In fact, it's almost never about the income. It's It's that we think it's about the money, but it's actually about why do I need to make this much money? Why do I need to do this? What is the purpose behind this? So I'm going to ask you guys, one of my friends, Kyle, Kyle Newell, go to kylenewell.com, shout him out. He runs a, a health coaching and fitness and also mindset business. He's amazing what he does. He's got a tremendous following online, kylenewell.com, shout him out real quick. I know for a fact that Kyle talks about this when he coaches, he talks about the seven levels of why. I want you all to write down why. Why do I want to do this? It's not about, oh, well, because I want to make more money. Okay, we get that. We've been around this before. Most of you probably heard this why discussion. But then that why goes to the next why. What's the next level of why? I want to make more money because I want to be able to do X. And then why do I want to do X? And then why do I want to do that? And why, why, why? Seven levels deep. So I got really clear that part of my purpose, part of my why, not all of it, but part of it was because I truly wanted to help others see the things that they deserve and feel the things that they need that they deserve and, and be who they ultimately need to be. So that's why I, I invest the time every single week with you all here, because I actually genuinely care about you. Yet the person listening to me right now, whether you believe it or not, I don't really know you, everybody. I see my team, I see my clients, but I don't see you on the screen. That's okay. There's a way to make that happen though. If you go to join the growth collector.com, we can find out if it's a good fit for you to pop into our private community, our private coaching and mastermind group. But outside of that, I genuinely care about people 
that care about this, okay? In other words, if you're investing the time and giving me the attention that I hope that you get value from right today and, and every week when we do this, then thank you, first off. But I want you to know that I'm not here to waste your time. I'm here to help you get a return on investment of this hour together that we get every single week. So here's how it's going to work. Today, I'm going to show you how I bridged. I'm going to tell you and show you how I bridged from being a full-time IT professional, right? And 2011 really is when I started the shift away from doing that full-time and moving into entrepreneurship full-time. But then 2014 is when I decided with some money to hold me accountable, okay? Check this out. I'm going to tell you all something that you might be surprised I would share, but I'm going to tell you anyways, because I think it's important. It paints a picture that we are all human beings. We all have things that we have in common that we don't even really know about, okay? Here I am in 2014, talking to my friend who is in another part of the country about my quote unquote opportunity, right? I'm like, hey, you should check out, give me some feedback about this business, this network marketing business that I'm working on building. I'd like to get your feedback about it. That was the plan, right? That, to share the information and see who had interest in taking a look and they took a look and they liked it. Great, let's move forward. Let's get some customers and make some money together. We're helping people. We we did it. We helped a lot of people actually. Like it was over a billion dollars of business that was generated in that company. Direct sales. It was one of the largest direct sales companies to grow that fast in, in the history of direct sales. Right. And I'm not going to share all the details exactly, but just know that it wasn't some like Mickey Mouse like little operation. This was like serious. Okay. And so I was traveling across the country. I was going to different things, but I'm still not seeing the income. But I realized this looking back, it wasn't about the income. It was about the impact for others and for me. Now, what do I mean? By me participating in that, that set the backdrop of what was necessary for me to build an actual business in terms of not being like a franchise-like network marketing business, actually building a business from the ground up, all right? That's what JDL Ventures is now, right? It's been built from the ground up with no income, no nothing, no team, no system, nothing from the base of what it started with, with 2014 to now being a multi-million dollar company and multiple companies around it that also do multi-million dollars a year. So, I'm not saying that to sound like, oh, look at Doug, there he is talking about something. No, it's about to inspire you all to understand that it is possible. It is possible within a relatively short period of time to number one, replace your current income or at least add to it a little bit like five figures or even six figures within the next six to 12 months. It's very possible. I'm not the only person ever did this in real estate investing, especially definitely not the only person. I'm gonna show you a specific strategy today, how to do that now, okay? If you guys wanna learn how to do that, please, comment on Facebook and in, inside of Zoom. I know you guys already know this, but just show me some love. Let me know that you want to know how to add another 50 to 100 grand the next 12 months into your life. I'm going to give you the prescription to do that with real estate investing being the means of how that's possible, okay? Who's here? I see my mother-in-law, Fairuz. I love you. Thank you for being here. You're always so supportive. God bless you. And, uh, and thank you for being here. Who else do we have on Facebook? You guys are being really quiet. I see Joe's there. I posted a comment to get some folks in the room. Where are you guys at? Where's everybody at? You know, like my, uh, my high school basketball coach. I love the guy, Coach D'Alessandro. If anybody's from that area, he has like a massive career as a basketball coach. We used to always joke around as kids and I, and I got nothing but love Coach D. But at the end of the day, we used to always laugh. You must know by now if you hear me. Where were you? Where were you? Like you'd always say it a certain way, just to make us laugh, and we'd be like so aggravated, but so we'd laugh about it too. But you know, he's he's just a really passionate man. We love the guy as our coach. We did amazing things. We were we had a winning record every year that I played. It was awesome. But where are you guys right now? Like where are you? Okay, Safaya is here. Thank you for being here. So I know that I'm quite sure that if you're in this group and you're still listening to me, you want to know how this works. So I'm just going to trust the process that you are here for a specific reason. Okay, but check this out. The backdrop is January 28th, 2014. I had a conversation, I think a couple of days before that with this gentleman about my other thing that I was doing, this side hustle, so to speak. Anybody know side hustle? Like, hey, this thing on the side I'm doing, trying to make some extra money. That was my network marketing business, okay? And so my buddy out in, I think it was in Colorado, or I can't remember exactly where it was, but it's like, hey, bud, like, yeah, uh, take, take a look at this. He's like, all right, I'll take a look. So he looked at it. He's like, hey, listen, this is pretty cool, but like I'm actually already building another business and it's revolving around real estate investing, but I'm actually referring people to this coaching thing that I'm doing and I'm making, he's using internet marketing, making a lot of money doing it. I'm like, well, oh, that's cool. Like, I don't really know what you're talking about, but I kind of get what you're talking about sort of. 
I said, I'll let me check this out. So I typed in literally everybody. I literally typed in the letters R E I. Cause at that time, I didn't even know what that meant. I didn't know what he meant by R E I. Okay. This shows you how like naive I was at that point in January of 2014. I didn't even know what the letter R E I stood for real estate investing, real estate investor. I go on Facebook and I type in real estate investing. And what do you know? Somebody who ended up being my mentor has the page for real estate investing on Facebook. Okay. You can look it up yourself and see that. And by all means, check them out, but I'm not here to talk about them. I'm here to talk about what we can do to help you out. Okay. Today, now, right now, this instant. Okay. Talk about timing. I know my growth collective members know what I'm talking about. So this is now, this is not about like later tomorrow, or the next day. So check it out. I go and I find it and I, I go into what's called a funnel. Now I know what that means. It's like, Hey, I go to his website. I watch this video. I fill out a form. Has anybody ever filled out a page on a website? All of a sudden you get a bunch of marketing. You probably might've gotten it from us. Like, Hey, we love you. We want to show you some stuff. I know you know what I'm talking about. You fill out a form next thing you know, you're getting 15 emails every week or you're getting people calling and texting. That was kind of what happened to me. And this is like the week before I decided to move forward. All right. So here I am getting blasted with information. I go do a phone call and then I'm on the phone call and it's like, wow, this is interesting. The stuff I saw, I want you to write this down. It was about how, how can you flip real estate with none of your own money, none of your own credit and make between five, 10, 20,000. I'm not saying between, I said between, it's really unlimited practically, depending on how good you negotiate on one particular transaction without fixing up a house, without owning it as a rental, without borrowing money. This sounds kind of ridiculous, doesn't it? I'm like, this is not, I got, I got to know that. Like, what is this real? Like, is this guy legit? I mean, it sounds like scam kind of like, what, what is this? I took the call because I thought it was just a scam. I was like, this is, I got to tell people about this. This doesn't sound legit at all. This guy's getting all these people to come in you know, did something that doesn't make any sense. I, I don't know how this is possible. And he says, this is, I want you to write this down. This is because of what's called contract law. Contract law. Okay, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not going to give you legal advice today or financial advice. I want to tell you this much. From my experience in most of the United States of America and probably Canada as well, and maybe even other parts of the world, as the purchaser of an asset, in this case, real estate. If the contract does not stipulate, if it does not stipulate that the contract is not assignable, in other words, only if it says that it is not assignable, assignment, I want you to write down the word assignment, an assignable contract, A-S-S, -S, and don't just leave it there, A-S-S-I-G-N-M-E-N-T, -S -S -E assignment, okay? If the contract does not stipulate that you cannot assign it, in other words, if it, if it just says nothing, then by default, at least in the state of New Jersey, right, with many attorneys that have looked at this, then by default, it is assignable. What does that mean? Okay. I learned. I asked questions. I said, okay. If the contract is assignable, which most of the time it is, unless it's exclusively said it, you can't. And even then there's a process. If it's assignable, you could take that contract. Hey, bud. Hey, buddy. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I got a new water bottle for my youngest. Hey, buddy. All right. We're talking to some folks on the internet. Thank you. Love you. I was getting like special deliveries. This is a pretty legit water bottle. Jeez. Oh. Wow. I got some cool stuff. All right. Hopefully we got some assignments closed today. <laughs> Pay for those things. Thanks, buddy. I love you. Excellent. Go have fun. All right. That's my youngest. He's only four. He's uh, he's about to be five. <laughs> Crazy in November. It's like a couple months. Thank you, buddy. I'm sorry. Thank you. Oh, we got, okay. We got this. My friend, uh, we helped my friend because we had a hurricane down here. So, it, it, you know, honestly, it didn't hit us as bad as we thought, but we helped our friend, my son, my older son and I just the other day preparing for this hurricane. And my buddy is just such a kind man. He's, he's, he's a man of God and he's just a good dude. He's just he had at his house, it's like his vacation house uh, over, you know, nearby here. He, um, he was kind enough to give us this computer. So thank you, John. We appreciate you, man. If you hear this, uh, we, it's just more than you had to do it. You didn't have to give us anything. We just wanted to help you. But he gave us this like table thing that has like this, I don't know how to explain it. It's like a tablet thing, but it's like a table, like a computer screen, but then it's touch screen and you can play games on like board games. It's pretty cool. I don't know what it's called. I can't tell you what it is, but it's pretty cool. It's really nice. 
So uh, we're enjoying it. Kids are loving it. So dude, say, oh, you got that new thing. So anyways, assignments, assignment. Okay, let's focus on assignment. The word assignment means, oh, my, my, my video is getting a little funky here. Hold on. All right. Yesterday we had a little mini power outage. So I hope to God it's not, there's no thunderstorms coming through. So it was a little flickering, but an assignment says that I can take this contract that I was able to negotiate and, and enter into as the purchaser of this con this property. I'm the purchaser. My company is the purchaser. Okay. I could then take those rights to buy this property and I could assign those rights to somebody else or some, some other entity. And for doing that, all that work to find the opportunity, to analyze the opportunity, to negotiate the opportunity, and ultimately get into the contract, that contract, like I told my growth collective members, that is the ticket to the closing. Without the contract, there usually is not a closing. Now, the only way there could be a closing is like if you have an agreement with somebody that's going to say, hey, I'm going to sell you my property for this much money, but ultimately... I'm not going to be able to, you know, uh, I'm going to, I'm not going to sign a contract. I'm going to basically just send money to this location. And then ultimately we're going to work to this title company. We're going to close. Like that's, that's not as common though. What's more common is actually where you have a contract on a property. So when you have a contract on the property, at that point, you have the ticket to the closing. That's like your ticket to the show pretty much. All right. And meaning like without the contract, there is not much value that you could bring. So this is a quick PSA for anybody who's out there looking to wholesale, which is kind of what it is, right? We'll talk about that in a second. Or contract flip, right? Please, I implore you, do not try to sell something that you don't have. Sell real estate that you own. Sell contracts to buy real estate, but don't sell an address to a property that you don't have under contract or a property you don't own. That is not legit. You can't sell something you don't own. Okay, let me explain. Again, I'm not an attorney, but I'm telling you from my own experience and what my counsel has shared with me on many occasions of the process that I've learned and done hundreds of times, our companies have. I can take a property that's in distress. A lot of times this works with distressed real estate. Properties that have dilapidated, they're falling apart, there's a major issue, whatever the case is, or the person has financial distress. I could take that situation have a conversation, learn some information about this property, right? Analyze and assess that information and then negotiate a deal, sign some paperwork with a contract. And then when I have that contract, check it out. I say, hey, I just got this property under contract for $100,000. Who is willing to pay me $10,000, $20,000, $50,000 for this opportunity? Why would someone do that? Well, because maybe the property is worth more than that. And not only is it worth more than that now, but it could be worth more than that when it's done being renovated, for example. So let's say that I have a contract to buy a property for $100,000. Write this down, $100,000 purchase. If I know that this property is worth, even in its current condition, $130,000, I could sell that contract to someone for one twenty, dollars and they immediately have $10,000 in equity. I just made at the closing $20,000. Then they go and they close on it for 120 and they put in, let's say $50,000, which means they're at 170 and check it out. Then they sell the property for 250 because they put in $50,000 worth of work. Well, what's 250 minus 170? Who's listening to me? What's 250 minus 170? Who knows the answer? Facebook or TGC, I see you there inside the Zoom. Who's listening on Facebook? Come out, come out, wherever you are, where you at? Where were you? Sorry, Coach D. <laughs> Nobody gets the joke besides my teammates from basketball or Coach himself. It's just, I just had to bust his chops. I got to catch up with him sometime. But no, no okay. We're, we got some participation in the growth collective, but we're not seeing a whole lot of love on Facebook. So I'm going to ask a couple of my team members, Joe maybe, and anybody else who's here that can pop a comment in there and say, hey, let's go, everybody. Where are you at? Because I need to get some fo folks plugged in here. Sophia, okay, 80K. It's simple math, right? 80K. Here's a pop quiz for everybody. How much profit did the person make when they sold the property for 250 and they they bought it for uh, 130 or 120, excuse me, and they put in $50,000? How much profit did they make? If you guys get this right, I'll send you a book. And it's not my book, but it's a book I like, a book that I've read, a book that I read multiple times. 
if I bought a property for 120, I'm sorry, yeah, 120, put in $50,000, and then I went and sold that property once it's renovated for 250, what is my profit? I would, if I'm you, I would say I need more information. Okay, here's what I mean. We're going to go on a little bit of a side deal here, not just about making the money. I'm going to tell you about how to do that in a second. How do we do this systematically and make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, not just a hundred? Okay, if you guys want to do that and think you would want to do that, then you should listen. The profit is not simply the selling price less what I purchased the property and what I put money into it. Here is why. That number is what we would call maybe the gross, G-R-O-S-S, -O -O, -O -S -S, gross profit or gross margin. But we have not factored in the selling costs, i.e. the commissions paid to an agent to sell it for top dollar, because that's a great idea if you're fixing and flipping houses, have an agent sell the house so you get the highest possible price. Use the MLS to do so, right? Use an agent to help you do that. What about the holding costs? Like Dane just said, what's up, Dane? You got to get in Zoom. I think you can get in Zoom. That'd be cool, man, if you came into Zoom. I know you're, you have access to that. So we got to get Dane into Zoom. Maybe shoot him a DM, Joe, if you could, with the Zoom link. If you, Dane could come in here to join us. He's got access to this room. So um, let's get him in here if we can. So anyways, okay. Holding costs, what are they? Taxes, insurance, utilities, landscaping, maintenance, right? What about how is the buyer going to fund this? What are my funding costs, my finance costs? Alicia's got to get the link too. Alicia's part of the growth club, but she's got to get access. If Joe, maybe you could shoot her a message as well. How do I yeah. get, yes, thank you. How do I get this deal closed? If I'm the buyer, not the flipper, I'm not flipping the deal. I'm actually buying the property. If anybody's looking to buy, just put the word buy. If you want to buy real estate, please put the word buy wherever you're hearing me right now in a comment or a chat. I'm buying, I'm, or put buyer if you want, buyer, buyer, whatever you want to put, buy, okay? If you're the buyer like Rich is, he needs to know what his costs are to fund this. Well, that's a loan he's going to take, maybe a private money loan. We can give you from our fund. Yes, we. I own part of a fund with other guys and gals. We could provide up to 85% of the total cost for the project. What does that mean? Well, it means that if I have the purchase price plus the renovation cost, you take that number times 0.85 and we could have that provided as long as your credit score is above usually 620. And if it's not, there's still a process to get like a credit partner and stuff. And there's other things you could do. And as long as your background is clean, you're not, you know, committing any crimes, stuff like that, you, you could borrow up to 85%. So that's pretty good. It's already available to you. Okay. If you want to learn more about that, check out realdirectlending.com. RealDirectLending.com has information. There's an FAQ about how that process works. And then if you like it, you just click on a couple of buttons and you push some information over to us and we'll take a look at it. And then our fund, which is KPRE, will help fund the deal. All right. So financing costs. There's the interest payments I'm making. There's the closing for the origination for getting the loan done. And there's other stuff that's not off the top yet. We didn't take that out of the mix. So what about that? Well, that's depending on the deal, depending upon your experience, all that stuff. How about the closing costs? We have to buy the property. We have to get title insurance. We have to get, you know, some things recorded like a deed. The seller usually, you know, does that and pays for that. But sometimes depending on the buyer, you might be able to, you might have to pay for that. It just depends on what you negotiate. Okay. There's other closing costs on the sale. There also might be closing costs. Check this out. In the state of New Jersey, there's a three-letter acronym that I wasn't familiar with until I sold a few properties and started seeing this thing come up consistently on CDs and saying, what's that? Oh, okay. RTF. Realty transfer fee. Although what other states might call it, you know, different types of taxes, intangible tax for like mortgage deals and stuff. Like there's taxes that are paid at closing when properties are transacted so that the state continues to generate revenue. So in the state of New Jersey, it's RTF. What's your RTF? Well, there's actually a website to look that up. If you're in New Jersey, go to Google and type in RTF calculator or realty transfer fee calculator in New Jersey. And you can find out for any purchase price, any sell price, what that looks like. 
So we can't just take that 80K. I'm sorry. I know we had a lot of great interaction. Thank you all for submitting your your answers. Unfortunately, I don't think anybody got the book. It's okay. We'll get another opportunity. You got to take the 80K and take those numbers out. So if you want a quick solution that's easy and free to use, go to runyournumbers.com. Runyournumbers.com is a gateway to a tool that we use internally that we have our paid coaching clients use as well that literally helps them put deals together without thinking that much just by looking at the numbers and understanding what the deal actually is. I will tell you, and I'm going to go back to the wholesale process, okay? We're going to talk about the 100K. That's what we came here for. I will tell you that across over 50 fix and flip projects that we've done as a company ourselves, not like just with clients, I'm talking about we've actually owned the property, fixed the property and sold the property. The average I call capture, what does capture mean? To hold or, or grab, right? Of the gross margin, the average is about 60 to 70% of the gross. So if we have 80K, as the buyer, you're probably looking at about what 60% of 80 is like 48,000 upwards of 56,000, you know, six times that or seven or seven times that. So it's like 50 to 55 K ish is like your net profit. If everything goes the way it's supposed to, that's another conversation. We've had meetings about that. If you guys want to go back and check, there's probably some stuff in the guides in the Facebook and definitely if you're part of the growth club, if you've had that as well, but let's go back to say all that stuff, it sounds cool, but I didn't come here, Doug, for like fixing up properties and selling properties and calculating stuff. Like let someone else do that. Is, it, is anybody with me? You want to like, let them do the work. Like just like, let them go take that all on. Let's just like go bring some great opportunities and just flip it to them and just make five, 10, 20 grand. Is that cool? Does anybody want to do that? I think you all want to probably do that. I, that's why you came, right? It's like, well, you didn't know that was the process, but now, you know, if I can show you the way to do that, that you don't have to fix the property up. You don't have to take the loan. You don't have to do any work and you can leverage other people's time and other people's money that will buy this property, but then you make a fee for putting the whole thing together. Is anybody at all interested in that? Please, I hope so. Give me a little hand raise on Zoom. I'll call you guys out. I see Rich. I know Joe is interested in that. Joe Gazzardi is here. I'm pretty sure everybody in the room is. I don't see you guys all right now, but that's okay. Look, here, here's the simple script, okay? Ready? It's five steps. Five simple steps. Take your pen and paper, write down these words. Find slash identify. That's step number one. Find slash identify. Two, analyze. Three, negotiate. Four, contract. Five, close. Find, analyze, negotiate, contract, close. If you think about it, if you say it like a sentence, I find, analyze, and negotiate the contract, and then I close. So it actually kind of makes sense because in our business, so a quick shout out to my wholesalers in the room, we find, analyze, and negotiate contracts to buy. See, we've decided strategically, and I'm not afraid to tell you all this, and I want to learn who's here that wants to do this with us. If you have a contract on a property, but don't have the process to dispose or dis dispo, as some people call it, disposition sell that contract, we would love the opportunity to help you. And what? why would we want to do that? Because our network of investors is just shy of 10,000 opted in contacts that are waiting to get a deal to buy, including our dozens of paid coaching clients, including our over 100 and something people in our community that are waiting for a deal, like they need it now. And we know who they are, we know their preference and check it out, we provide most of the capital. So if you have a deal, if anybody has a deal that you're having trouble selling that opportunity and you have an opportunity that we could help you sell or maybe even buy ourselves, please send an email to wholesale. The word wholesale is W H O L E S A L E wholesale W H O L E S A L E sale S A L E. Like I said, at jdlventures.com wholesale at jdlventures.com. Our team will see that opportunity. We'll analyze it. We'll talk about it with you. We'll see if there's a fit or not. And if there is, we'll go into contract with you. And then we'll get it sold. We take on our wholesale team, we take contracts to close. I'll say that one more time. Our wholesale team is trained, ready, and able to take your contracts to property, their investment deals, and get them to a closing table without you having to lift a finger. So again, wholesale at jdlventures.com.
Now, if you're like, that's cool, but I want to do it myself. No problem. We're here to help you. So today is how do I find, how do I analyze, how do I negotiate, how do I get into contract? Find properties, okay? You could find off-market properties by using a tool that we have a gateway to as well, nationwidesellerleads.com. Nationwidesellerleads.com is a database of millions and millions of property owners. And the database also includes their contact information that you just have to pay like 12 to 15 cents per what's called skip trace to click a couple buttons. And we do this with our clients when they ask us to help them. We can do this for you too. If you become a client, we'll skip trace it for you. We actually give you a hundred free leads and we do it for you to start. And you contact the owners and you start talking about the deal, about their property. If they're willing to sell their property and if they are, let's talk about all the details about the property. That's one, what we call acquisition strategy. Here's another one, Facebook groups. Go on Facebook, type in any sort of buy, sell group. A uh, marketplace, for example, right? There are these groups for each city and state in the country, probably multiple. If you don't know, you could check it out. That you could go into and you look for people doing a sale of, let's say, garage sale type stuff. And if they're selling a bunch of stuff in their garage, if they're selling furniture, maybe they're moving. Maybe they're just selling furniture. I don't know. But if they haven't decided to sell yet, we want to find people that are not selling that are willing to sell to you or to me. Okay, there's a bunch of other strategies we talk about. Again, join the growth collective.com. We can go through more of those acquisition strategies. Once we have a lead, okay, I identify a lead. I'm gonna tell you how you remove yourself, by the way. Don't let me forget that. We might go just a few minutes past two o'clock, but we're gonna get through this. Once I have a lead, now I need to analyze that lead. The website is, I might have said it before, runyournumbers.com. Runyournumbers.com. It's a free tool. The first thing I said, the Nationwide Star Leads is also free for the first seven days. You could try it out. If you like it, you can pay like 100 bucks a month for it. It's got a tremendous amount of data, tremendous amount of resources. You could run comps through it. You could do skip tracing. You could send mail right from the tool. We don't own the tool. We work with the people that own the tool. Same thing with Run Your Numbers. I didn't build that. I just have a gateway to get there for you. It's like a bridge. We're a conduit, okay? And I talk about that in the growth club. If you guys know what I'm talking about, we just get you to where you need to go. We're a bridge to get there, okay? Runyournumbers.com. I need to analyze the deal, but maybe I don't know how to analyze it. I'm going to give you guys, before we're done today, if, if you're interested in literally taking off all the responsibility like I did and give someone else the ability to run the part of the business, which is acquisitions and even dispositions, so that your whole business can be systematic and automated, I'm going to give you the gateway to do that, okay? So, analyze, all right? Cool, we analyze it. We make an offer. Offers begin negotiations. I don't know what to say, Doug. How do I do that? We cover that. Join the growthcollective.com. Basically, you have rules of thumb, which are like the 70% rule, the 1% rule. These are things that we talk about. We might've talked about before. Today's not all about that. It's about how to take this opportunity and monetize it, monetizing it, okay? Take this deal that you don't really necessarily want to do the fix and flip. You don't want to be the owner of the rental property, but you know it's a great deal. How do you take that great deal for somebody and flip it to that somebody? How do you find the somebody? You know what I did? The first like three to six months of my real estate investment business, by the way, I never told you the fun fact. I'm gonna tell you guys, I'm not ashamed of it. I'm actually excited about it. I invested $28,000. You might say, oh, Dad grows Doug. He's, I'm not talking, listening to this guy. He's out of his mind. Check this out. Franchises require hundreds of thousands of dollars sometimes to invest into. Some businesses are being sold for millions of dollars. So if you want to have an income stream, then go work for somebody else. Seriously, I mean this in nothing but love. Go work for somebody else. You could create an income. Fine. But this isn't for you right now. Like this is about investing into a business. If you want to build a business, you have to make the decision to invest in yourself and into the business. I made the decision to invest $28,000 and check it out. I'm not ashamed to tell you, I used three different credit cards. Yes, I, you, the guy here telling you how to do this, this is not that long ago, less than 10 years ago. 
I didn't have the $28,000, even though I'm making over $100,000 a year and having this quote unquote side hustle, I didn't have $28,000 of discretionary money saved up to go put towards this business. So yeah, I had to grab my wallet, which I have somewhere. I don't know where it went. It's downstairs. And I pull out one card. Okay, here's the number. Da, da, da. Okay, the second one. Here's the number. 10,000 on this one, 5,000 on that one, 13 on the one, whatever it was. Humbling experience. Scary as you know what. Nerve wracking, fear, all these things going through my mind. Anybody with me? I know you are. You've had this. You've thought this. You've done it. The question is, how do I turn, write this one down, turn your expenses into investments? And I'm not talking about from a tax perspective or accounting. I'm talking about in your practical life, what is currently considered in your mind as an expense, the mindset of switching that from an expense to an investment. You know what expenses are? Expenses are, are things that don't provide a return. Anything in my life that provides me a return, a, a financial return or a satisfaction, I consider to be an investment because I'm investing into my life and my life experience. And I encourage you to do the same thing. So $28,000 in, I go out there, I'm starting to send direct mail using that same process with off-market sellers, skip tracing, yes, but also mailing thousands of pieces of mail a month, spending thousands of dollars a month, getting calls on my business phone that I set up with Google Voice. Anybody sound familiar? I hope probably somebody in the room. But just get out, I'm brand new in the business. I'm going through the course. I'm learning as I'm going. I'm taking action though. But you know what I'm doing? What I'm not doing is I'm not doing it right. I don't know what I'm doing yet. That's the problem. In that beginning part of the business, two weeks in, three weeks in, but here's what I knew how to do. I knew how to go to Staples and get some business cards. So check this out. Today, like if you don't have business cards or a digital business card, today you go and you get business cards or you create a business card. And why? Because everybody that does real estate that has some benefit to you that could be a client of yours needs to know who you are and what you can do to bring value to them. If they don't know that, if you don't tell them that, then guess what? You're not going to be connected. So here's what happened. As I'm sending out thousands of dollars of mail every month and I'm getting all these phone calls, I realize something. I need business cards, but I also need help. I can't take the calls at the time when I'm working full-time. I can't take that call because I'm busy doing other stuff. I'm working. I have corporate America. Job. I'm working eight, 10, 12 hours a day. So now I have a voicemail. Hey, how you doing? This is Douglas Beck. Thank you for calling out about selling your property. We'd love the opportunity to buy your property. Please leave a message after the tone. Let me know about your property, the address and, and how soon you're looking to sell. Thank you. That wasn't good enough though. Somebody had to speak to that person. Somebody had to send a message to that person. I got my first virtual assistant. I want you all to write down virtual assistant. VA. Within two weeks of starting my business. That was the decision that changed the rest of my life and changed the rest of my business. And still to this day, I'm looking at my screen. I want to thank my team. I see you here. I'm not going to call you out because I don't want to make it awkward. We have multiple team members in all parts of the world. This is an international business. If you think I'm crazy, maybe, okay, you can think what you want. Please, no big deal. You could just exit the room, no sweat. I'm nothing but love. I pray for you. I hope to God that everything goes well for you. If you want to change the direction of your life, you have to do things a little bit differently. I learned from my mentor, the guy in the group that I invested $28,000 into, the most important thing I learned, everybody, was not about how to do real estate investing. It was how to outsource my life. But you know what? What's interesting is I knew that and God put me in a place in corporate to realize that from working in what's called procurement, IT procurement. I already was helping Johnson & Johnson spend over a billion dollars a year in services and technology stuff. I was one of maybe 13, 14 people in an office in central New Jersey helping them buy as a company, a global organization, over a billion dollars a year in IT stuff. So the experience I had before I got into business was a purpose that God gave me to understand. I realized that. I'm like, wait, so I'm helping the other company do this outsourcing thing. What about my business? And then this thing started clicking. I'm saying, wait a second. So in other parts of the world, 
$5 an hour, $10 an hour is like triple or quadruple or quintuple of what it is in the United States. And these people, God bless them, they're actually sometimes more capable. Well, for sure, they were more capable than I was because I didn't know what I was doing yet. And these people were already trained by other people that decided they weren't a good fit for some reason. And they invested these folks, these virtual assistants into their own life and their own education. They got experience of years sometimes and specialized knowledge. Okay. If you want to know how to properly do that, please set up an appointment, join the growth collective.com. We'll take you through the process. My staff or myself will tell you what to do. Even just on that call, we'll give you the quick insight. And if you want us to help you do it, we'd be happy to do that as well. We have a process and we have a service for that. And we've lived it to this point. We've spent close to half a million dollars just in one company, half a million investment. It's not spent, it's invested, right? We invested into our team. Some of my virtual assistants have been working with me for almost 10 years. Guys and gals, man, it's not that complicated. So what did I do? I said, okay, I need to talk to people. I need to find someone who could speak on the phone, but I need to also find somebody who could send out information about what I realized were deals. I'm going to talk about that flip in a second, but check it out. I didn't have the time. I had the ambition, I already made the investment, I had the process, but I did not have the time or the know-how. I found people that had the time and the know-how. And I trained them a little bit on my personal process, but by doing that, my business catapulted in a great way. Like, mind you, real talk, six months in of direct mail marketing, that was our acquisition strategy, zero deals closed in my first six months. August, I think it was around this time, 28th or something like that. I think we closed our first ever wholesale flip after starting in February or basically January, but February 1 was the official day we're in business. Look, what changed? I decided that I was not going to just go out there and send direct mail to everybody and hope that someone calls me back and that they have a great opportunity that's not for sale that I could then go buy. No, I decided to flip the script. So here's a tip for you today. Another good one. Find folks that already have contracts on property that just need some additional help selling those contracts. What did I say before? I said, if you have a deal under contract that you want to get to a closing, send us an email, wholesale at jdlventures.com. Everybody, when we did that to our list of over 500 contacts, which by the way, those cards from Staples, I dropped about a thousand of them in a matter of like three to six months. I was at two to three networking events every week. Can I make time? Can you make time? Listen to me, two times a week or even one time a week, let alone some of them are networking online now because of Zoom, but could you physically get yourself to one place even once a week to connect with people that are gonna become your clients so that they can know who you are? Look, if you can't do that, then maybe we should just kind of pack it up and say, maybe this isn't the right business for you right now. That's my opinion, right? You could do whatever you like, but if you can't commit that way, then what are you really committed to? Because since I did that, I had a network of about 500 contacts and my email system was set up by my first virtual assistant. He actually built out the technical side of our email marketing, which just today we put out a new edition of our newsletter. If you guys didn't see that, it's called the Dealmaker Monthly. Check it out. Let us know. If you don't have access to that, we'll get you the link. It's actually on my personal Facebook. I think you can find it there. But that was done by my team of virtual assistants. Right? They know what's going on because they're plugged in, but they create it. They do the marketing. So I don't have to do that. But check this out. In this first six months, I what I did was I went to networking events. I shook hands. I didn't kiss babies. Okay? This isn't politics. Okay? I'm meeting people. <laughs> I shook hands and introduced myself and I passed out some cards, but check this out. I also obtained over 500 cards. And you know what I did? Every single night, I got that stack of cards, which I always have a stack somewhere because it's just like, this is like opportunity right here. This is worth probably hundreds of thousands of dollars in my life, this stack right here. And I don't even know who these people are yet, but they're going to make millions of dollars and I'm going to make hundreds of thousands. If that makes any sense. I'm not going to just make hundreds of thousands and they get nothing. No, this is a win-win. See, because Lisa and Adam and April and Eric and Ian and Frank and whoever else, Paul and Teresa, 
they all have something in common. They all want to buy real estate deals. And my responsibility is to show them the opportunities and let them decide, but help understand where is the opportunity. How do I do that? Well, I send them some emails. Who is actually sending the emails? The virtual assistant that I hired for less than $5 an hour, who now at this point is making much more than that because he's earned it. And he's got a team. We have close to probably 20 or so full-time virtual assistants working in just one of our businesses, which is JDL Ventures. And our other companies have probably another five to 10. It's a massive operation in that sense, right? But it's, would it be possible? It wouldn't be as possible. It'd be possible, but not as possible to do that locally. And it wouldn't make sense financially to do so either. So this is the system. I'm peeling back the curtain. I'm not showing it to you. I'm telling you, if you want to see it and like live it again, I'll show my clients. You guys ever have a question? I'll show you my systems. You've seen it in meetings. Join the growth collective.com. I'll peel back everything and show you. It's not that complicated. It's just, we don't have the time and it's really designed for the clients. But today is to give you the preview of what this is, okay? So six months in, man, about four months in, I was ready to throw in the towel. Three, four months in. I'm like, you know what? I need like a partial refund. I called up the guy. I'm like, listen, man, you know, this business could work for you. God bless you. It seems like you're doing great stuff there on the West Coast. I'm over here in New Jersey. I'm sending out a crap ton of mail. Everyone's yelling at me, cursing at me, saying I'm crazy, get lost. What are you doing? Leave me alone. Stop sending me so much mail. I'm getting 60 pieces. I'm like, I'm not sending 60 pieces of mail to the same person. There's 59 other people sending mail. That's called competition. So I'm like, this isn't going to work. I'm sorry. I'm an optimist, but this ain't going to work, bud. I need a partial refund. I wish you the best. Just send me back 14 grand. I'll call it done. We're good. And then, you know, the great mentor, what he was, he goes, Doug, I understand. He's like, listen, I get where you're coming from. This is normal. Trust the process that we went through. We rolled our sleeves up and he took the time. And I, I'm forever grateful. Man, you know, you think about stuff and you reflect and you think back to like, what if I didn't do that? What if I didn't stick it out? What if I didn't push through? And what a blessing it is to look back like, Nine, 10 years later now, I'd say all the things and all the people we've helped, because it's not just about making money. It's like the people that have helped to do their first deal, their next deal, to grow their businesses, to start their business, right? The clients we've served, the sellers we've helped close deals that were problematic, that were facing foreclosure, that were facing issues with liens on their property, all kinds of stuff that we've helped. We've created a massive impact. And it's not me, it's the, it's the process. And you could do the same exact thing. But the fact is, he didn't give up on me. I almost gave up on myself, though, in terms of in the business, right? I'm just going to tell you, you guys could put two and two together. I want to shout him out by a first name. I want to get his permission. I don't want to make sure that we, we may want to bring him in if he's willing to. My man, Cody, out in Arizona, if you don't know who Cody is, you're going to find out if you go online, look up real estate investing, and that's who he is. He's grown a massive organization. He's doing development deals and stuff. He's doing some amazing things. He's got his own stuff, and you can check him out. Cody trusted, you know, he believed in me. I didn't believe in myself, but he believed in me. And of course, he held some of my money in the process. But if it wasn't for him holding that other 14,000, I never got the 14,000. But you know what? The first deal we did, we made 5,000 bucks. But you know what happened? The first six months, it was nothing. Then it was 5,000. Then it was probably 10, 15,000. And we closed like seven deals in the second six months of my first year. And then within a year after that, we were tracking two to three deals a month. And I basically decided to retire from corporate in October. Well, tender guy decided in March of 2015, I was at a Tony Robbins event. And I said, I'm, I'm this is going to happen one way or another. I know we can keep leaning into this and figure it out. I worked down my numbers. I figured out the process. And I said, by the end of this year, I'm not going to be working at J and J by my birthday. It was September 29th. I had the picture off the share. You guys look at my Facebook back September 29th of 2015. I took a picture of my cubicle. It was the last day I sat in that office. I actually I handed my resignation letter. Right? Excuse me. The last day I was in the office was October 16th of 2015. In our first 12 months, we did north of $200,000 in wholesale flips. We built a multi-million dollar business since then. It's not me though. It's a we. Right. And the we is my team. It's my company. It's the people that I've brought in. It's the process that we follow. I can't possibly go through every single scenario, but I'll tell you this though. The things that stand out to me are the fact that 
I trusted myself for a little bit and then I lost trust in myself and I had to have somebody who's a mentor pushing me to trust myself and trust the process. He stepped in when I needed him the most. Thank you, Cody. I'll never forget that, man. And now like I help other people all across the country and I'm trying to be like Cody because he's done that for years. He's built a multiple, God knows how big of an education uh, business in his, in his own right. He was my mentor. Now I'm the mentor of others. And what a blessing to be able to pay it forward, right? To, to help others. And I've been working on that since mid 2015. I realized that at the time when I closed 20 or 25 deals, I said, there's a lot of people on me that haven't closed our first deal yet. I felt inclined and responsible to serve my local New Jersey based real estate investors, people that wanted to become real estate investors. And I've had clients as early as mid 2015. And now to this point, we've helped hundreds of people work on their business and get their first deal closed. And now in this group of thousands of people, helping you guys do the same thing, it's just such a blessing to be able to show you, but it's not that complicated. And I know I'm telling you today, and you're like, well, this sounds good, but it's got to be more to it. It's really not that much more to it. You just have to know how to find, how to analyze, how to negotiate on the phone or over email even and get in a contract or even just have someone else do all that stuff, which is called acquisitions and check it out, get a virtual assistant. And with a couple of other pieces of the puzzle, like having a network of people, which we could bring you the network. So if you don't have the network of people to sell the deal to, and you're willing to work on a reasonable profit share, we would love to help you do that. We have clients all across the country. We have members of our growth collective, literally from Hawaii, uh, Texas, Florida, Colorado, uh, you know, Oklahoma, New York, Canada, and more, California. Like, let us help you. We don't know you as well as we need to know you. We don't know if you're ready to go. You've already been doing this. You're really trying to get that little extra bump or whatever. No sweat. We appreciate you being here. Tell somebody about it that needs help. Maybe you don't have the capacity to help serve in that way. Would love to get you to refer someone that we can serve. Maybe you're like brand new and you're like, I don't know where to start. We have a, an option for you inside the growth collective called TGC community, which some of you might've heard about. That's a great place to start. It has structured the first 30 days and beyond, and it allows you to plug directly into the network of coaching clients and investors that are all across the country and learn from their experiences and plug into the live sessions every single week. We have two sessions if you're part of the TGC community, if you're part of the growth collective, the private coaching group, you have like five or six sessions a week, plus an additional level of support. So all that stuff already exists, right? If somebody here just wants to kind of just get started and you want to like get started like now, okay, go to jointhegrowthcollective.com and put a slash and put the word community. You'll see a five minute video of me talking about what makes our community special. And that's a great entry point. And we have some folks in the room now that are part of the community. I see Dane's here. I know that other folks in this room, I think they're part of the community. Um, Janet started off in the community. She's decided to step into some bit, something bigger. It's exciting. I love that. I'm excited for you. I'm, I'm pumped for you. I know that we've all had our moments where we had to make that decision. It's tough, but just get the information. Because uh, I, I mean, I, I don't even know how to say it like, it's not about me anymore. It's not it's never been about me, right? It's about serving my God and serving my people, which are you listening to me. You're listening to me for a reason. I don't know exactly why, but there's something that you need that I might be able to help you solve. So get the information and then decide if this is going to be something you want to invest into for yourself and for the rest of your life and for the rest of your family's life and your future. I mean, I was able to literally retire myself from over a six-figure income and now grow multiple companies that are doing business all across the country in a very short time, relatively speaking. It's not just me. It's like, there's people doing this. One of my clients, you know, grew a multi seven figure business in like three years up in New Jersey. Another one of my clients bought his first rental from me about six years ago. And now we're partners in the fund together. We have a, we have a debt fund that we own together. This guy started his first rent is Phil. If anyone knows Phil, his first rental property he got through JDL Ventures. He was in construction before that. He's an amazing human. He's got a family. He's got kids. He's got his wife. And now he's running a multi-million dollar fund. Sort of six years ago. Rich, Rich, Rich Sokon's here, but Rich Linetsky, Rich knows Rich. 
Rich Lineski, right? He's a client from five, six years ago also. Rich has gone on to wholesale flip, dozens of deals, fix and flip multiple properties, buy and hold, private lend, work in a fund, coaching now in the group. Rich is one of the coaches you'll get in the growth collective in the TGC community. Thank you to Coach Rich. The network of people that we have is so, so cool and so amazing and so beneficial to our community. So like, just even if you just popped in and got the networking, I'm telling you, like, it's, it's something magical, it's something really powerful. And not to mention the actual tactical stuff that we could do in the group and with you inside of this community. So again, you got the link on there on Facebook. Everybody who's on the Zoom already knows this because you're already part of the group. But on Facebook, join the growthcollective.com slash community. Check it out. You know, if you want to set up some time to talk before you sign up for anything, before you sign up for that, go to join the and you'll get to know, you know how to do that. You'll see testimonials and there's more coming. There's constantly testimonials coming. It's amazing. It's because people are taking action. Thank you to my clients. Thank you to the members of the growth. You guys are what makes it special because without you doing what you need to do, it doesn't really matter what we do. It's just like, we're just talking and nobody's doing it. it does, that's not the point here. See, we're not about just education. We talked about this today. Our focus is on implementation and empowerment to take action. So on that note, there's so much more, but that's for today. God bless you guys. We want to help you check out the websites and go make it happen. We'll talk real soon. God bless you all. And until then, have a good rest of your day.